Hi, I'm Paul Cook. I'm the general manager for Irvine Ranch Water District. Welcome to IRWD's San Joaquin Marsh and Wildlife Sanctuary. We want to take you on a little tour today of the San Joaquin Marsh and Wildlife Sanctuary to show you all the ponds, all of the birds and other animals that make their homes here or just fly through on their way down south or north on the Pacific Flyway. The San Joaquin Marsh and Wildlife Sanctuary is also an important part of Irvine Ranch Water District's natural treatment system. Our natural treatment system is used to clean up the urban runoff that is generated from the streets and then the creeks throughout our service area. It's very important for us to clean up this urban runoff to make sure we can protect the local environment and especially the Newport Back Bay. We're here on this foggy morning to begin our tour of the marsh. It's foggy this morning. Well, it's a marsh, so this happens very often. We call this part of the marsh the campus area. We call it the campus because we brought in old buildings that have historical significance. We've been able to bring these buildings down and put them to use as educational facilities, as well as just a community resource. The educational element of these buildings comes through our partnerships with the CNCH Audubon Society, who has offices here in the blue building behind me. We also work with the Discovery Science Cube, as who does educational programs here as well. We use these buildings also with our community partners to provide them spaces for meetings and other things at no charge. So let's go take a look at some of these houses and talk about their history. This house is a great example of one of the historical homes that we were able to bring down from the Irvine Ranch onto the Marsh Campus property. This house was built in 1920. And apparently it was one of the first homes in Orange County to actually have running water. Pretty good for a water district to have this house on our property. This house is now used as a visitor center here at the San Joaquin Marsh. We have displays set up inside so anybody that comes by the campus can drop in and learn about IRWD and the San Joaquin Marsh. This is the Duck Club. This was one of the two original buildings that were here on the property when IRWD acquired it back in the early 1990s. Since that time, we've been able to restore the building and expand it a little bit and now make it available to our customers at no charge. They can have meetings, receptions, whatever. This is the other original building that was on the property when it was purchased by Irvine Ranch Water District. We make this building available to the Sea and Sage Audubon chapter, so they then in turn can do their bird watching from here. They're also a great resource for the community. They'll lend you a pair of binoculars to go look at some birds, or they'll even tell you where the best birds are today. Let's go check out the pollinator garden now. In the early 1990s, when Irvine Ranch Water District acquired the San Joaquin Marsh property, it was overrun by a lot of non-native plants. Joining me is Mo Wise. Mo is our wetland scientist, gets to work out here every day. She's gonna tell us a little bit about how all these non-native plants were replaced with native plants. Oh. So we've really taken the initiative to replace invasive plants or non-native plants with more native plants that have been historically native to the area for about 150 years. Wow. Right. And these plants also help promote pollination. Right. So now we're in the pollinator garden. So Mo, can you tell us why it was important to have a pollinator garden here in the San Joaquin Marsh? Yeah, pollinators are super crucial in keeping plants and ecosystems healthy. So. Actually, one out of every three bites of food that we have is thanks to a pollinator. Right, great. Yeah. So what's the structure we have behind us? This is actually a structure that we have created to help promote bees to come and live in this pollinator garden. Keep the bees happy, right? Keep them happy. Right. Another element of the San Joaquin Marsh is this butterfly garden we're walking through now. This garden was actually built by Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts as part of their community service project. Mo, why is it important to have a butterfly garden here? Butterflies are actually considered one of the best pollinators around, and so attracting the butterflies also promotes pollination. Great, thanks Mo. Yeah. So now we've left the San Joaquin Marsh campus area and we're out in the actual marsh itself. I'm walking with Ian Swift. Ian's the manager of natural resources for Irvine Ranch Water District. Ian, tell us about what's going on out here and how it all works. Paul, the San Joaquin Wildlife Sanctuary is a 320 acre urban runoff treatment wetland. And here in the marsh, what we do is we take um, water from San Diego Creek, primarily dry weather, urban runoff flow, and we pump it into a six pond system. That's about 68 acres of ponds. And we treat the water for common nutrients and pathogens. So let's talk about the nutrients that you're removing out here. Uh, what are those nutrients and how do those come out of the system? So the primary nutrients the marsh removes are nitrogen and phosphorus. The nitrogen is removed 
through uh, bacterial action in the bottom of the pond, as well as plants that you see around here in the pond. The nitrogen is taken up into the plant tissue and they use it for it to grow. In addition to those, we also remove pathogens like E. coli bacteria that come from urban runoff. And the E. coli is first eaten by a lot of the multicellular organisms in the pond water and is also removed by a process called phytolysis where the UV light from the sun uh, penetrates the first few centimeters of the water and that helps to um, deactivate those, those bacteria. Kind of like how we use the UV system over at the Michelson Water Recycling Plant, right? Exactly, just using natural means. Yeah, that's great. So we're treating water out of San Diego Creek, which collects water from really the entire watershed. But how much water really is that that we treat and how much of those nutrients do we get out? So on average, we remove about 75% of the nitrogen that, that comes through the pond system. And that's about 40,000 pounds every year. And that's out of a, over a billion gallons of water that we take from San Diego Creek and run through the pond system. So these nutrients would otherwise go straight down San Diego Creek, out to the bay and into the ocean. Right. So the primary environmental benefit of all the great work that Ian and his team do out here in the San Joaquin Marsh is the removal of the nutrients that would have otherwise gotten into the Newport Back Bay, which causes algae blooms, and we don't want that. Great job, Ian, thank you. So the San Joaquin Marsh serves as great environmental purpose, but what else do people use the San Joaquin Marsh for, Ian? Well, Paul, with our 320 acres here in the San Joaquin Marsh, we have 15 miles of hiking trails. And in addition to hiking, you can do bird watching, photography. It's a great place to just come and relax, enjoy nature, right here in the middle of Irvine. This is one of my favorite places in the San Joaquin Marsh. There's just so much going on right in this one location. Ian, why don't you talk about this pond and everything that's going on around it? Sure, so this is one of the two ponds we have that has an island in the middle. And the islands of these ponds are really special because the birds like to nest on them. So during the spring nesting season, you can see up to 10 different species of birds nesting on the islands. There's a couple different species of plants ringing the pond on the margin, cattails and bulrush. These are what we discussed earlier, the types of plants that remove nutrients from the, the pond system. We also have uh, marsh fleabane and coyote bush in front of us other plants that help fill in the marsh ecosystem. That's great, thanks. So with all these miles of trails here at the San Joaquin Marsh, you can't walk very far without coming across one of these bird boxes. Mo, tell us what these bird boxes are for and what they're doing out here. Yeah, these bird boxes are for nesting tree swallows and they're nesting boxes and they're migratory animals. And in the 1990s, they actually didn't exist in this area. So with all the neat native plant restoration that we've done here, we also included these nesting boxes to promote nesting and reproduction in the marsh. So is it the same birds every season? Yeah, we do see some of the same birds each season along with new species coming in, but they are used by um, these migratory tree swallows each year. Great, any other birds to see? There are, let's check it out. All right. So here we have the shorebird pond that we intentionally keep shallow. And this pond really brings about a lot of shorebirds of all different types and species. And we're actually able to raise the levels during the wet season and lower the levels during the dry season to kind of mimic their natural habitat. Right. So it's, it's a really different habitat than the rest of the San Joaquin Marsh. Um, tell us why we picked this habitat. This habitat is actually very crucial for our entire ecosystem as 97% of wetlands in California have been degraded over the last 100 years. So bringing this habitat back and kind of mimicking nature a bit is really important for the entire ecology of the area. Great, thanks a lot, Mo. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us on this tour of the San Joaquin Marsh. If you want more information, you can send us an email at info at irwd.com or check out our website, www.rwd.com. Thanks again.